Hi, welcome back to my channel, Heather Abroad. Today, we are just going to be talking about culture shock, the good, the bad, and the ugly. So first, we're gonna start with the good because not all culture shock is bad. Some of it just takes a little time to get used to. So there are four things that um, I feel so far are positive uh, culture shocks. The first one being safety. So um, when you first moved to Norway, which we, we read some books or I read some books and kind of got a little bit comfortable with what I was coming into, but once you get here and start to feel uh, just the amount of safety for pedestrians and children, it's a huge shift. Um, you see small children uh, getting on buses by themselves, walking to school independently um, as early as five. And so that's quite a shift. And so then you can imagine coming from the U.S. where that is like not a thing. Um, the first time that I could not locate uh, my child for <laughs> about 20 minutes, I like went into panic as if I'm still in the States because uh, we had lived in Houston previously and then Alaska um, and Anchorage. And so those cities have like different uh, feel to them in terms of safety level. So I went into like, oh gosh, he's missing. And I found out he was missing with another child that I did not know. And, and so I just got, I went into panic. I got super nervous. I called the cops because that's what I would have done in the States. And uh, it was an interesting conversation of how that progressed with like, hey, I've lost my child. Um, they, they ask questions, but then they're also like, well, has he ever done this before? I'm sure he'll turn up. Like, let's give it some time. Does he have a device? I'm like, no, he's seven. Like, he's never done this before, like, which makes me even more nervous. And then I'm in a country for only like two months that I'm completely unfamiliar with, so I don't even like know how to, to navigate the situation. And sure enough, it um, felt like eternity, but uh, about five or so minutes later, after the you know, 25, 30 minutes, he, he did turn up and I was super grateful. But that, that situation um, it was what really made me realize that like, I, I'm from the United States and that environment definitely, um, it does something to you when you're raised in that for a long time versus being raised in a European culture or Norwegian culture where there's this like understood safety. Now, granted, there's way more people, um, you know, to, to manage in this United States. So I, I don't know that you can necessarily match that um, feel. But all that to say, I knew I was bringing to the table a certain environmental um, aspect that uh, made me feel like, oh gosh, I've lost my child. To where here, they probably would have given it a few hours before they even thought to panic. So yeah, it's positive. But it was still, uh, it was a shift for sure. Okay, so then the other uh, second one is, uh, again, the amount of safety and trust. There is a store that we came across in Oslo that literally has no attendant. Like you can go in, you can try on shoes, uh, multiple shoes are out. Uh, you can order from the tablet online. It even says no attendant. And I mean, obviously there's cameras, but in the States, that wouldn't stop anybody. The shoes would be gone. And so just the fact that there is an unattended store and everyone just trusts that you'll just try on your shoes and leave, that just floors me. Like I, I just, I can't wrap my head around it, but it's, it's super neat and I'm grateful to be in an environment that is that trusting. Um, uh, the third one is time off. So you get lots of time off here. It's part of their um, uh, labor laws here that everyone gets three weeks. Uh, there's like some timelines about when you have to start work and yada yada. I'm not gonna go into the details of it, but for the most part, like once you're here and working, you get three off uh, weeks off between July and August. And then you also have uh, 20 uh, days throughout the year that you can take. So that's actually like a, another three weeks. So five to six weeks um, you will get off once you're like established here and working um, over a year. And again, I won't go into the details about if you start at what time. There's some of that, but anyway, lots of time off for your family. Uh, and the fourth thing is they have a national health care scheme, which that means um, more taxes, but it's kind of in my mind like prepaid health care. So uh, there's a shift when I took my child to, um, sorry, when I took my child to the health care facility. And then when we left, like nobody asked for any money. There wasn't like, where can we mail your bill? And so it's just like, okay, I guess, I guess we'll go, bye. Um, and we left. 
And that is a shift because normally like they, they want to co-pay, they want some amount of money um, to at least start you know, payment on, on the bill for what the services that you've just had. So that was a huge shift of just like, okay, like we go and my kids are taken care of. Okay, so now we're gonna go into the bad, um, which some may say, oh, that's not bad, that's normal. And maybe it is normal for you, but keep in mind, this is my perspective of a shift in culture going from uh, Western-ish to European uh, culture. So, okay, let's get going. Um, first thing is in Norway, everything closes early. I, I don't think that that's necessarily a European thing. I think that's a Norway thing. And I don't know if that's a Oslo also, cause it's bigger. It might just be a Stavanger Bergen thing. I don't know. Anyway, so everything closes early and everything's closed on Sunday. On Sunday, you may find um, a store called like Extra or Rema, which have like these little miniature stores on the side that they'll like close down the whole shop, except for like this like two aisles on the, on the right side, which has like your basic necessities. So, I mean, you, you won't starve on a, a Sunday if you've forgotten to go get, you know, bread and milk, but you're just not going to have lots of options. Um, and so that's a, a huge shift from the convenience of everything being open almost 24-7 in the States. Um, so just know when you come here, everything closes early, shuts down on Sunday, and also shuts down around uh, the major holidays for multiple days. So around Easter, Christmas, the shops will close down a couple days um, in a row and then maybe open up for a little bit on Saturday, close early and then close again for like another two days, like grocery stores and everything, which is weird to me, but I've gotten used to it. Uh, the second thing is permission slips. So in Norway, your children don't need permission slips to go on field trips. It's just understood or expected that they will go wherever they're supposed to go. And you might find out like, um, hey, kid comes home mom today I went to the museum on the bus oh okay good you know did you have fun uh, and that's a huge shift because in the states what happens is you have to have a permission slip signed you you know a weeks ahead of time they may even ask for parent chaperones to come alongside and um, I don't know if that's just how the, it evolved in the states I'm not exactly sure why if there may be safety in numbers because of how the states are um, but anyway, all that to say, you, you, you don't know. You don't have to sign permission slips, they just go. I'm sure if you wanted to you know, have something to say against that, you could go up and say, like, my kid can't go. But anyway, it's different. Uh, the third thing is that there are no walk-in clinics here. So um, for example, in big cities in the States, you might have an urgent care where um, you can walk in with your kid at six o'clock p.m. Uh, all of a sudden you've noticed like ear drainage and you want to go ahead and like get them in because they have a high fever or vomiting or whatever. Um, well here there's not a lot of urgency. So you can call um, Legavat, I'm probably saying that incorrectly, um, but you can call them and they'll essentially like triage your kid on the phone and tell you if it's urgent enough that you can come or do you just need to wait and call your doctor in the morning and they like save some appointments for those kind of situations and so you, you put it off. Um, and then they'll tell you like, hey, if the symptoms get worse or if there's uh, more pain or more vomiting or whatever you're experiencing, they're like, call us back. But to me, there's just like this, um, this wall of like having to call, right? And kind of get permission that you are bad enough to get seen. Um, and that's a shift because in the States, you just take them. Obviously you'll have to pay, but you can just take them and say, hey, is everything okay? You know, I'm a first time parent and, and I'm freaking out because at midnight my kids like got croup and, you know, his lungs are like, <gasps> you know, making noise. Like I would just take them to the emergency room and here that's that's not really how they handle things. Um, now, obviously, they have 113. You call if there's a true emergency uh, and the fact that like you're, you're nervous for your life and they'll come. They'll come. You know, that's not that's not a problem in terms of that. But it's just a huge shift when you're used to being able to have access where you can literally just like walk in and like get an appointment. Okay, uh, moving on to number four. I was shopping here uh, for a dress for May 17th and 
I was looking to get some advice from the attendant on if I was doing what was appropriate for uh, the expectations for May 17th. I wanted to fit in. I didn't want to stick out like a sore thumb. Um, I wasn't going to be buying like a Norwegian dress, but I, I wanted to dress according to what the culture era, cultural expectations are for May 17th. And I just got like this blank look of like, yeah, yeah, that, that, that's good. I'm like, well, yo, yeah, well, is it too fancy? Is it, is it too casual? Like, I want to make sure, you know, that I'm, I'm fitting in. And I just, I got no feedback. Like I, I was hoping for like a, yeah, you're heading in the right direction or no, you could stand to be a little fancier. Um, I just thought that there would be like some appreciation for the fact that I was trying. Um, yeah. And I just found myself in the dressing room, like almost crying just out of like shock, right? For like how the interaction went. It, it wasn't overly negative, but it didn't make me feel good for the fact that I felt that I was like trying. And keep in mind, this is one person. I have met several uh, service industry people who I kind of feel like we're acquaintances now. Like they know I'm practicing Norwegian. I see them all the time. Uh, they're quite friendly people. And so again, that's not everyone, but that was a moment where I was almost, you know, crying in the dressing room because I was trying. Okay, so moving on, let's see, one, two, three, four, number five. So the government runs um, all like spirits and liquor distribution. So these stores have a specific name. Um, someone had mentioned maybe uh, I should do a video about it, but it's called Vinamonopole. All right, <laughs> and so uh, the government says the hours. So again, there is no, it's Saturday night at five o'clock, a friend invites you over for dinner and you say, oh, I'm gonna go grab a bottle of wine. Nope, no last minute decisions. Um, you have to know ahead of time uh, on Friday as well. This place gets like rushed with people trying to, I guess, get things for the weekend. And so it's just got very short hours of time when you can go shopping there. Just know that ahead of time. The government runs that and there's no last minute and it's closed on Sunday with everything else. Okay, so now we're going to get into the ugly. These are the things that I had no idea like we're even a thing in Norway. There are uh, three. And the first one is radon. So radon is like a naturally occurring gas that like comes out of the ground and it's cancer causing. And they have to test the houses here for it. And so you get like this, this document that says like what the radon levels are in your house. And there's like um, a normal window and you know, exposure over a long amount of time can cause lung cancer. And so I, I'm still like trying to wrap my head around that because obviously there's like radon levels in our house. And um, so anyway, that's just something that like, it's just, it's a thing here. And I've I recently talked to other people and they're having to have their houses treated to dilute the uh, parts per million or whatever radon gas. And so anyway, it's just something I never even knew was like something I had to worry about. Uh, so that's been like a, a shock of like, oh, it's, it's just all around me. It's just the nature of Norway's land. Huh. Okay. Number two. Um, this is like a product of, you know, wartime and being in Europe, but there are bomb shelters everywhere. And coming from the United States, it's just not really a thing. And so when you go here uh, in the churches and the schools, like pretty much any public place, you know, that is used uh, for public facilities, there's a bomb shelter. And, and that's like a shift uh, of ease. Like when you come from the United States, like, you know, war can happen, but just seeing like the, the tangibles of like, here's where you're going to go. If it does happen, I kind of am comforted by that. But I also, there's a shift of mentality when like, you know, for example, I, I take my kids down, you know, to, to childcare and we walk through a bomb shelter door because they're using the face, the space functionally or I go to the school uh, meeting and I go into the basement and I go through the bomb shelter doors and to the basement to have this, this meeting. It's just different. And so I'm used to it now, but it, it took some adjust, adjustment of mindset of like, okay, this is just normal here. Um, and then number three is uh, iodine tablets. So it's also normal that uh, the schools have iodine tablets for your children in the incident of any like nuclear fallout. It's always been a thing um, since I guess iodine tablets were a thing, 
Um, and again, you only sign a permission slip if you don't want your kid to receive them uh, in, the, in, in the case that they need to distribute them. And so that's just like one of those things in the United States where it's like, I have never even thought of this, um, never even thought that the school would be in charge of, of this situation. But I think here it's a conversation that happens more often and maybe at an earlier age, I'm not real sure. I'd be interested to know uh, if you would like to inform me of like, does this conversation start in like year one and year two for Norwegian kids? Um, is it kind of just a thing? You know, like in the States, they have um, amber drills now uh, for active shooters. And so I think, you know, the kids being raised nowadays just have this, oh, it's just normal. So maybe that's just one of the things here. It's like, oh, you know, bomb shelters and iodine tablets. It's just normal. Um, yeah. But as a mom, I don't know. It, it, it was a shock. It was a shock. So, Okay. Feel free to let me know if there's any other things uh, that you have questions about or um, could add to this conversation of culture shock. Uh, it, it's definitely been interesting taking it all in. Uh, there's, there's so many positive aspects to living in Norway and the things that we get to do and the things we get to see living over here, we're super happy, but it, it comes with a shift. And so um, being mindful that if you are in Norway, and going to the United States, there would be, uh, I guess, the opposite shift, right? So if you have any questions about that, let me know. Thanks for joining, and I will see you next time. Bye.